Welcome, friends. I hope you're not feeling too frosty. Whoa! He has POC2 in his username. I've been doing this wrong the whole time. Anyway, back to Car Cup 6 we are. I thought it was just Majir. I'm, I'm really sorry, guys. I'm really sorry. Dang it. Anyway, uh, Majir POC2 playing as the Con F, as he does, and Frosty Teeth playing as the Coalition as well. Um, this is again from the first round of the qualifier section, and I've got to say, I would give this to Majir probably, uh, but he hasn't played in a long time, so it's kind of questionable. Frosty Teeth, more in practice, but I think Majir's still probably the favored player in this scenario. We will have to see. Now, I, he I, heard, I heard the blast drone coming. No, I didn't, never mind. That was a lie. But I'm sure he's going to be making one. I mean, we know. It's, it's, it's Majir. Not as many as Tren would, but he'll stay. He'll still make a lot. I'm sure of it. <laughs> um, Tren is like the blast drone guy. If you ever, you should like. If you ever have time, you should go back to Artifact Cup 14 and watch him play with Tren. That was a really fun match. Let's get some cinematic shots of the desert while we're at it. In our favorite map, best map in the world. The best map in the world. Uh, so Frosty Teeth coming out with some early LAVs right here. Sandskimmer Fabrication just now finishing for Majir. Is he making a Blast Drone? You know he is. Um, sorry about that. Uh, it's interesting base runner positioning right here. He may be actually consciously doing this to try to check for Blast Drone run buys, but I don't think so. If that were the case, he'd probably launch a probe. And I will say... Against Con F in general, I think it's a good idea to launch the probe. Uh, you know, you just you never know what these what these Con F types are gonna do. He's gonna spot the blaster in there. He knows. Take some damage on the probe, but that's okay. Just so long as he doesn't fly under over the production uh, cruiser. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's that's dead. Whoa, hero probe did not take a single shot there. But anyway. One blast drone is out, running across the field here. The base runner is gonna spot it, but not gonna be able to do anything about it. There's a whole lot of LAVs here. So, there's another blast drone here though, and he doesn't know about it. Uh, uh. That'll be okay, I guess, but they are going to make a run by, and I think they are going to hit the eco. So I would, I would be moving units back if I were uh, Frosty Teeth right now. Base runner is taking a lot of damage. I think Majir should probably smoke this one. But I have a, I have a terrible feeling about where this is going. And then Majir going into Railgun Fabrication to transition off the back of this. Smoke comes out, mind you. Now that Blast Drone can kind of hide in the smoke like a Baneling in like the shrubs in StarCraft 2, you know what I mean? He's running for it, but he's not going to make it. He will get gunned down, so that's good for Frosty. He keeps all those LAVs alive. And Majir making Reactionary Sand Skimmers, that won't obviously hold on its own, but he will get Railgun Fabrication pretty soon. Here comes the Blast Drone attack on the back line. Has been spotted, so Frosty's splitting, but toward these sand, uh, salvagers, ooh, so he takes three out. Pretty good damage on two other ones, but they're going to get healed, of course, but that is, that is painful. That is painful indeed for Frosty Teeth. He's really going to hope now that he can get some damage done with his LAVs here, or else things might get a little tricky for him. Okay, railguns are ready, but actually... Majir kind of getting split here. Not going to be easy for this production cruiser to get back. Um, the Con F carrier is a bit of a defensive boost in the early game in that its range is for free. You don't have to power up a system for that. So I think I think Majir just needs to run back here. But maybe he's trusting in this blast drone. And there could be something huge here. Oh no! Watch out, Frosty. Ah! <laughs> uh, uh, I got five of them. Oh my goodness. Oh no. Oh no. Pro tip Majir, just queue up like one of them and then you can get refinery mode. But anyway, <laughs> that's. Oh no. Blast drones for the win, man. Let me say this if you don't trust your micro in order. Because it takes a lot of micro in order to stop this kind of blast drone cheese from killing you, right? And if you don't trust your micro enough to be able to uh, stop, like. To be able to not get hit by the blast drums and the LAVs and be able to watch the backline and stuff. I think against Con F it's totally justifiable to play uh, kind of a more passive sort of eco opener. And just, you know, go go safe. Don't don't try anything funny. Because, you know, uh, Frosty Teeth would have still been in the game if he could get some good damage with these LAVs. But not only did he get hit in the backline, he got hit in the frontline too. Um, 
And so Majir just, you know, he's having a good time. <laughs> he's, he's playing games. He's having a good time. He's playing games in a game. Um, <laughs> I'll be quite pleased with how this turned out. Not gonna lie, I'd like to see refinery mode before raiding, but uh, that's okay though. And also, he got railgun tech, but he hasn't made any of them yet. I'd like to see him get, just get railgun tech as well. But I don't think it's gonna matter, to be honest. Turret is up now. Would you just gonna give it respect? He could take it out, but uh, no reason to lose the numbers, I guess. Only lost one to that turret. He knows where it is now. He's not gonna get caught out by it, so that's completely fine. The other thing he can do is keep this uh, base runner like on the ridge of the hill and then smoke up after the blast run is finished to here. Blast run takes out the turret and then you don't have to worry about it. That takes like five more steps than anyone wants to do, let's be honest. So, Actually, it looks like, okay, maybe I was a bit wrong. He's not going for refinery mode because he's going to go for a double PC push now. Um, and why not? I mean, this is too late for a normal double PC push, but if he's slowed down his opponent this much, this is basically on time, you know what I mean? So taking losses of this turret though, and it's gonna be the blast drone. Oh my gosh. That blast drone stays up very narrowly. But the more uh, assault rail yeah, production tab, can you actually work? That'd be nice. Oh well. The more assault railguns uh Majir gets, the less likely this is to turn out well for Frosty. This is being annoying for Majir, but not for long, I would assume. Blast drone, blast drone! Oh! Ah! Ah! Oh. oh, I just, I thought people would have fun, play the game together, they're just blowing each other up. Uh, <laughs> that was, that was disgusting. <laughs> that was absolutely disgusting. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, now he's getting refinery mode. <laughs> Majir, you animal. <laughs> I think, I think he's here in order to take out this turret, but he needs to be killing the blast run right now to do that. AVs are gonna come out, but that's not really gonna matter. There's already there's heavy railguns here, not even just assaults. So, smoke up. No, he's not gonna do it at all. So yeah, the the tactic I'm thinking of, by the way, in case it wasn't clear, is you make a blast turn as it's almost finished producing. You hit the smoke as you move up to it, so you can't get shot at. And then you can. Uh, by the way, actually, Sandstorm's getting taken out by some nice smokes there. But anyway, you can't. Um, how do I say? You can't get hit by the turret while you're moving up there. So the blast drone runs out of the smoke, blows up the turret, and they will take out a turret in one hit. So that's just a really safe way to take out the turret. You won't take any losses, like guaranteed. Frosty Teeth going for an air transition. I like that, actually, in theory. But in this case, I don't think it'll work because um, there's two PCs here, and I think that's going to be enough to stop it. Not even consoles, man. Uh, <laughs> so I don't think that's going to matter, really, but Majir. Oh, you dirty man. He's gonna start mining. <laughs> oh, I love it when people do that. I love it when people do that. Air units are out here. Yeah, you can see the, the damage that's getting done on these guys by the production crews. They're already taken out. Uh, you should probably just give these uh, AAVs a little bit of respect here, but not too much. Oh, don't run into the turret though. Ooh. Okay, that's not so bad, but that could have been that could have been really bad. You can see how fast a turret kills an assault railgun. It's just like shut. LAVs here not going to be able to trade anywhere near effectively as long as there's assault railguns in the back line. This blast drone here going to get a single kill? Yeah, why not? As if he hasn't done enough with blast drones already. You know what I'm saying? Um, he's also on three artifacts, by the way. I'd like to point out, and I think Frosty's done a good job of getting artifacts in the meantime, but it's just not going to matter. Uh, and Majir making sand skimmers, that is the correct choice in this scenario. Whoa, you queued up a couple of them though. Like, you know, you could you could set up three bases, like, rather than queuing up, you know, this many sand skimmers. You could go on four production cruisers, that'd be fine. This is fine, guys. Yeah, that'd be fine. I still I still agree, this is like a chokehold. You know what I mean? And it's not what I would consider doing at first when I'm ahead this way. Normally I would go into eco and then try to win that way. But this is this is good enough. This is a, like another way of doing it, if you know what I mean. You know, uh, upgrades are actually good for Frosty, like really good. Well, okay, never mind. I thought he had damage as well. 
But he can take these fights all day long. But uh, if heavy rails start hitting that carrier, they're targeting any salvagers right now. But once they start hitting that carrier, it'll, it'll be fine for him. I just I really want to see him make another production cruiser here. Is he moving out with the? Oh wow. Um, I think he's trying to end the game with his carrier. Which, I mean, that would work, but it's, again, like, I don't think you need that, but... But hey, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I think it'll work anyway. Frosty deciding this is his time to move out. And he will push Majir off this base, that's why I'm not so sure about this move. Really, you just need to make production cruises and get an eco up behind this, and eventually you'd have, you know, 50 railguns, it wouldn't even matter. Uh-oh, uh-oh, turret time. The railguns have done a good job, or, sorry, yeah, the railguns have done a good job baiting the carrier, though, so he can move his sent- no, there's an AV here, never mind. But still, you know, soldiers getting killed en route, this is not really good for Frosty Teeth, it's just kind of like, you know, he can do this, sure, why not, but it's not going to help him, really. Yeah, and Majir just moving out with his carrier. He's just like, yeah, I'll just I'll just nuke you to death. Why not, I guess? Sandskimmer damage is up, by the way. So now the upgrade is beginning to favor Majir, I would say. Oh yeah, definitely. These guys are so close to this turret. I have inlips on, of course, so it doesn't look as cool as it might, but... but yeah, look at the damage taken by this carrier here. And what did what did Frosty actually gain from this maneuver? He gained a little bit of air, but I think it's just gonna close up again. Actually, it looks like Majir's falling back with his PCs, but he could just close it up again if he wanted to, so... So it, it didn't work, really, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, I think it was a nice attempt, but... And actually, that is the only log module, so... or logistics module. Try not to use acronyms. So, uh, Frosty Teeth is actually fleet capped right now as well. You can see, we just put down another one right there. But. Just trying to stop the extraction of this artifact. I approve of this because that artifact could be quite tasty for someone who's on the defense like this. I'd like to see him put power in the mobility support just to get there a little bit faster, or into the uh, weapons, but it doesn't matter too much. Plus, with the Con F carrier, putting more than one power into weapons doesn't really make much of a difference. Because you get the missile at power one, you don't get anything else really except for like fire rate speed, I think. And yeah, you get the armor piercing rounds, I guess. You know who's good at- that's that's a nice hit. You know who's good at cruise missile shots is Tren. He's so good at those. Like, he always lands and it's crazy. Tomcat's really good at it too. When you see people who are good at landing the cruise missile shots do it, it just- suddenly it looks like so overpowered, but it's, it's not really. It's just that they are incredibly skilled at what they're doing there. Units engaging on the wrong front here. That's kind of funny. These AAVs are toast. They can smoke to delay for some time. They're not even going to do that, though, it looks like. This poor guy going to get wrecked. Yeah, and Frosty definitely not on the back foot. He's, like, falling off of the platform. Yeah, <laughs> this is this is basically game here for sure. Oh, yeah, look at that, the fifth artifact. So it really is game, but even if it wasn't the fifth artifact, he's just going to get bombed out here. It'll be a carrier kill, like, from indirect fire, basically. Uh, and Majir scores the final artifact, and that is going to be game. Well done by Majir. It was those blast drones, man. They were just disgusting, so... <laughs> Fair warning if you're playing against Conef, blast drones, what can I say, right? If you go for an AAV build, you'll be a lot safer against them because AAV slow them down with suppression, and, uh... If you just play passively in general, you're a little safer, but... I don't know, who likes doing that, right? So I can understand why Frosty opened the way he did, but it seems probably he wants to work on his anti-blast drone micro or just try a different build against Conef.